Ford Lightning is straight fire in ways the Tesla Cybertruck never can be. But is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla Weekend. I ran a video in July about the biggest differences between the Tesla Cybertruck and the Ford Lightning. And you guys had a lot of comments uh, and some very deep concerns. So I've been responding to them. There are timestamps below if you want to skip around, so don't feel like you have to watch the whole thing if you don't wanna. So let's get started. Obviously Tesla fans, as the page name suggests, but really, the supercharger network is the only thing making Tesla relevant anymore. Other manufacturers will eventually surpass Tesla because they actually know how to build a quality car that doesn't have panel gap issues, bad paint, actual customer service, and all the other flaws Tesla won't deal with. Because money. Well, because money is a, is a great answer. Uh, it's been because money for the last 10 years unsuccessfully. Um, Ice vehicles for most legacy manufacturers are not profitable, so not because money. And other manufacturers will surpass them in quality. Well, maybe. Um, Lexus has exceptional quality, uh, build quality, paint quality, but Tesla's actually turned that ship around quite a bit. And if that was what was holding people back, well, the next couple of years might be kind of rough for those guys. And, you know, uh, customer service. I'm not sure what you mean by that. <clears throat> I know there are complaints about Tesla's customer service, but there are complaints about everybody. And if you're suggesting that the dealer network is somehow going to be the saving grace, it's not. People despise car dealers. The whole car dealership experience is very unpleasant. And if that's how they're going to save themselves, well, I... <laughs> I will go very far out of my way to not buy a car from a dealership because it's so awful. And getting things fixed? No. 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 As a current F-150 owner, I just want the same truck, basically, but with an electric powertrain. The Lightning is exactly what I want. Well, sure. And if this was 2007, uh, a, a, a smartphone with a keyboard would be exactly what you want. That's what uh, my G1 Android phone was. It had the touchscreen, but it also flipped out and had a keyboard because, you know, I really need, I really need a keyboard. Um, you may not know what you want until you have it. That's very true. So something to consider. Mm, the F-150 Lightning is a familiar truck in many ways, but in others it's trying to think of a way to put it delicately. It's an electric horse. You forgot the millions of advertising dollars Ford is putting in. Yeah. Yeah, when you've got something that's sold out, why are you still advertising it? Um, I think it's just what they do. I think it's the only thing they know, so they just do it. I, I wouldn't go that way, but, you know, have you driven the F-150 Lightning? Those who did disagree with you. I own a Mach-E. The batteries work. And I guess your big complaint is the name, not the car. It isn't. I reserved a Lightning too, not the Cybertruck. On job sites, vehicle to home and vehicle to grid allows me to leave the generator behind. Tesla should do this with their truck. Well, my friend, I have some pretty fantastic news for you. Six months before the Lightning unveiled that they have plugs in their car, the Cybertruck did the same thing. They have 240 and uh, or 220 and of course the 110, 115. It's already there. And yeah, you can you can charge your house with it. You can charge anything with it. It it's a 240. I mean, plug it in, man. Go to town. Uh, have I driven it? Those who did disagree with me. Well, um no, they don't. They agree that it's a reasonably competent, reasonably capable truck. No one's had the opportunity to take the truck for an overnight or a weekend or a week. That's a better test of how good the truck is for anything other than a test drive or a joyride. So it feels like you're upset that I haven't driven it. 
when I guarantee you haven't driven the F-150 Lightning, and that you don't know what the capabilities of the Cybertruck are. So those are things, hopefully, you have learned today. I always heard the Cybertruck was too small. I haven't heard that. I haven't, I haven't heard that. Too small for what purpose? Um, hmm. I've heard that the towing capacity is inadequate, but that would be true of any electric vehicle, I suppose, at this point. But uh, yeah, I had not heard that. You seem to be glossing over a number of incentives and price reductions that will be available for people who purchase the Lightning, especially if they're purchasing it for work. Not only is it eligible for the $7,500 EV credit, which the Cybertruck is not, and that's true, it is also eligible for all the same business tax reductions and write-offs. Well, that's true of the Cybertruck as well. And by the way, the $7,500 tax credit, that may be up for debate. It is entirely possible that the EV credit will be restored in the new infrastructure bill. And if it is, hold on to your butts, because it's going to drop the price of the, uh, of the Lightning by another $5,000 and the price of the Cybertruck by $10,000. Although, again, not in the bill at this time, but uh, it's very likely to go back in. For a number of owners, the Lightning will be effectively free after fuel savings are calculated. That's also true of the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck gets more miles per kilowatt hour. It's a more efficient truck. I just paid $60 for 250 miles of gas in our F-150. That's painful. Even by your inflated numbers, a Lightning could make back that 20 grand difference in 100,000 miles. Uh, it sounds like you're assuming the electricity is free, and it is not free. You're still paying for it, and it varies depending on your region. But uh, that math, I am quite confident, doesn't work out quite that well. But any electric car is going to save you on your per mile costs. Or should. Should. I mean, I wouldn't compare a Geo Metro to a E-Hummer, although that would be a pretty fun matchup. Just ask yourself this, how long have Ford been making the best-selling pickup for their customers, and how long have Tesla been making pickups? The F-150 is a work truck, the Tesla Cybertruck is a lifestyle vehicle, no hating needed. So. How long has Ford been making the best-selling pickup? I don't know. How long was Blockbuster dominant? How long was Yahoo the number one search engine? Times change, my friend. Times change. Uh, Ford used to be the number one selling um, sedan. The Ford Taurus. They sold a kajillion of those. How many are they selling now? Times change. And the F-150 is a work truck. The Cybertruck is a lifestyle vehicle. There are a lot of buyers who are looking for the Cybertruck for work. And when it comes down to dollars and cents, it's a good truck. Is this goof comparing a workhorse, gold standard pickup that has been around and slowly refined for generations to a novelty truck built for people who want a light duty recreational vehicle? So first of all, goof? Yeah, thank you. I, I wear that badge proudly <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. Yeah, I'm a goof. I accept it. Be at peace with who you are. A workhorse gold standard pickup that has been around and slowly refined for generations. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. This truck has never been built before. It's built inside of a truck that's been built before, but the powertrain is a very significant percentage of what a truck is. And this is brand new territory for them. So, yeah. I am absolutely putting them on even footing. And are you, by the same token, are you saying that Tesla, who has made over a million cars and may hit a million in the 13 months uh, coming up soon, to a company like Ford, who's only sold 100,000, 200,000, who has the advantage there? Comparing it for people who want a light-duty recreational vehicle. If you think the Cybertruck is light-duty, I would suggest you may wish to review the specs again, because it is not. 
Oh, this video was a waste of time. I was actually very interested in watching this video, but unfortunately, this guy, his points were completely useless. If you value your time, please refrain from watching this video. Voice of thought, thank you so much. That is amazing. I mean, every comment you leave increases engagement and pushes me up a little bit more visible to strangers. So your comment helped people see it. I'm sure that they scrolled all the way to the bottom <laughs> and read your comment before viewing it. So, you, yeah, yeah, my points are not useless. They're ones you disagree with. I cited them. I cited my evidence. Uh, and yeah, if you value your time, yeah, you don't have to watch my videos. I'm okay with that. If you've got something more important to do, my friend, by all means, go for it. You're soft, my guy. Okay. So you think Ford is just blowing hot air. Well, no, I don't. I think that their uh, specs are exactly what they say they're going to be. The published ones anyway. Um, and I think that they don't stack up dollar for dollar in terms of performance. Um, my counter would be, do you think Tesla is blowing hot air? Because uh, apart from missing deadlines, their vehicles always perform to the specs promised at delivery. They just do. Um, and they usually overperform. And a lot of times they perform even better later on with an over-the-air update, which other companies have yet to do. So do I think Ford is just blowing hot air? No. I think their promises are small and attainable. Except for their production targets. I think those are optimistic because... They just don't um, understand the difficulty of sourcing batteries, but they're starting to catch on. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Pile on in the comments below and try to do so politely. I mean, come on, man. And uh, as always, my friends, uh, stay tuned, uh, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear uh, from you clever robots in the fast lane. And thanks, as always, to my amazing Patreons who get early access, quite a bit of bonus content at this point, an ad-free experience, and help keep the channel running for as little as a buck a month. I literally cannot do it without you guys. And your support makes it so that I don't have to chase the algorithm and can instead spend that time making content that you actually want to see.